Hi everybody, David Campanile here, owner of Campanile Law, located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate. As always, if you want to schedule a time with me to discuss a, your estate planning or probate needs for free, contact me at njestateattorney.com. Um, so today's topic is actually a part two of a topic we, uh, we did about a week or so ago on charitable remainder trusts. That was part one. This is part two of it. Um, so let me just dive right in, give you some recaps on charitable remainder trusts really quick. So charitable remainder trusts, why do, why do we like these? Uh, and why does the government make these really like a tax incentive is because the government runs everything, uh, budgets for the income tax. Rather, they are trying to incentivize people giving the charity. Um, so they let you take your, uh, current income tax deduction and, uh, for the charitable amount and there's no capital gains tax. So let's drop, uh, uh, on the trust because of the element that it, uh, the charitable element. So let's just dive right in. So elements of a charitable remainder trust, you have, uh, Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust. So you have two of these. You have the Annuity Trust and the Unit Trust. The Annuity Trust gives you a set amount of money per year. So how that's going to be drafted is if you put in a uh, million dollars, you are saying, I'm going to take X dollars per year. On the opposite side, a Unit Trust is going to give you a set percentage of the principal per year. So we look at that more as if you put a million dollars in and you say, I'm only taking... 5% of that per year. So what are these rules? Um, and the U.S. tax code is um, convoluted. It is so tough to understand. Um, but uh, a person that I watch a lot, his words were the exact words, and I have to use them because it explains everything perfectly the irs creates the rules and likes to make them as simply complex as possible so you'll read a rule a rule will point to an exception the exception will point to another rule and then there's going to be another exception and sooner or later you're just diving down a rabbit hole um it's like an incredible rabbit hole that you nobody understands anymore um, so that's why people pay accountants and attorneys to go down those rabbit holes and figure everything out for you. Um, so it's one less thing you have to worry about, but if you ever get into it and you want to be really, um, put your head into a funnel, definitely go read the, the U S tax code. Um, so what are the requirements for a charitable remainder annuity trust? So there's a fixed amount that is paid out to a non-charitable entity. So you have to pick a person that's going to receive the money um, that is going to get paid out yearly from this trust. Um, typically, the creator or the grantor of the trust is going to place an asset into this trust, but then get paid back. Okay, so you're the, you're the grantor, you're the trustee, and you're the beneficiary. You can be all three. Um, the annuity pay the annuity payment amount must be not less than five percent or more than fifty percent of the initial fair market value of the trust. It is not the yearly annuity; it is the total annuity. So, when you create this, you have to take uh, you have to pay out at a minimum five percent of the trust of the value at the time of creation but no more than 50% of the trust at the value of the time of creation. So if today I put in a million dollars into a trust and I'm going to take, I can take 5%, anywhere between five to 50% of that. I'm only worried about that million dollars. So if this generates income, it's fine. Um, I only have to worry about the present fair market value at the time of creation. Um, Payments back to the grantor must be paid annually. So you have a requirement. You have to take one pay. You have to take at least one payment a year on this. So the other part is this must be irrevocable. What does that mean? Um, when the trust is created and the assets are placed in the trust, the person creating the trust loses all abilities to t change the trust or move assets out of the trust. 
irrevocable. You cannot revoke it. So once it's there, it's all locked. Um, there's no, I'm destroying this, I'm changing things. It's locked. Um, the exceptions to this rule, however, are, let's say you name a charity and um, I'm going to name, uh, I don't know, you pick your charity of choice. That charity goes defunct or another charity grabs your heart and tugs on your heartstrings. So you want to change that. That is really the only exception to the rule on the irrevocable trust. There are a few other exceptions, but they're not really drastic exceptions um, that you should be concerned about at this time. Um, uh, when the trust is created, it must benefit a person who is alive and the payout cannot last for more than 20 years. Um, charity has to get paid within 20 years. So what does this mean? One, you can't nominate a dead person. Um, that's just common sense to receive money. So this person has to be alive. And it can only be for a period of 20 years. So if you're giving to a younger person, let's say the beneficiary is only 30 years old and you're setting this for 50 for 20 year duration, their payouts stop at the age of 50 and anything after that goes to the charity that is told in the charitable trust. Um, so... This all depends on who the beneficiary is, how old they are, and what you want to do. So you can set this up for one year to 20 years. There is no, there, there's wiggle room in between. You can't exceed that 20. So you tend to see these with more older people or elderly people. Um, so especially probably for uh, Medicaid, some Medicaid or uh, uh, planning uh, to ensure that they don't have to bleed out all their accounts or everything. Um, the other thing is, and I apologize if I'm speaking quick, LinkedIn only gives me nine minutes. Um, the entire remainder must go to charity. If you have a trust like this, like the, if you have a trust like this, it appreciates greatly. It all goes to charity, not paid out to the grantor. So if you put money in to this trust and it's generating income, you're not getting that extra income back. You're taking either the number that you said or the percentage that you said. Um, so if that remainder is, you started at a million and let's say now that trust has $5 million after 20 years and you've been taking your 50,000 or your five, 10% a year and it's still accruing all this money, and after 20 years, you see $5 million there. Well, that $5 million is going to that charity. Um, at a $1 million asset, you pay out $50 per year for 20 years. If you invest it, it grows significantly. $10 million to the charity, no exceptions. Um, the remainder value at the time you create the trust must be calculated to be at least 10% of the initial fair market value of the asset. So what does this mean? You, if you set up a $1 million asset, the payout um, must be $100,000 at 10% of the initial fair market value. So that's how that's calculated. Um, so you can't go lower than that $100,000 in that account because that's what uh, the rules say. Um, so... I mean, we can dive more and more into this. If you really want to sound smart when talking to friends, family, or your attorney, call it, uh, we call it charitable remainder annuity trust crats. Um, yes, you'll sound like a genius, um, you know, alphabet soup. Uh, that's really what we go for. Uh, we like to keep things uh, abbreviated. But this was part two of charitable remainder trusts. Part one um, is available as well. Uh, I do apologize. My cat is going crazy right now. I don't know why. Anyway, my name is David Campanile. I'm the owner of Campanile Law located in the, great, in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate. As always, if you um, would like to set up a free strategy session in regards to estate planning or probate, contact me at njestateattorney.com. If you found this video helpful in any way, you have questions about charitable remainder trust, please reach out to me at, on njestateattorney.com. I'd love to answer your questions. Uh, your questions. Um, this is a little bit of a deeper dive into things. Um, 
So I understand there are a lot of questions. Um, like our page on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, and have a great day.